Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a good friend to the show, and he's got some great news to discuss with us. The man I'm talking about is Neil Hill. Welcome to the show, and Neil, let us have it. You and Big Rami hooking up for 2019. How did it happen? Um, so Rami reached out to me sometime after Olympia, probably a, couple, a week or two after Olympia, and just uh, congratulated me and you know the athletes and the team on their success in 2018. Um, and it's been a really successful year for all the athletes. So obviously, I've been super happy with sure. every performances. Um, and it's very much a team effort, and I'm very, very fortunate to have an amazing team of athletes. So that obviously on that side of things is very, very positive. And I've always had, um, I think Rami and myself have always had mutual respect for one another. So we don't see each other unless it's expos or events. Sure. You know, and I'm always very professional and welcoming when I see him, and I genuinely mean that as well. Um, but I'm also very critical or, or very honest with my views of an athlete's physique and what we see people on stage. Just say very say, the same as you. Yeah. Um, so he reached out to me probably about a week or two after Olympia and just said, you know, congratulations, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, hey, listen, I know that it wasn't the result that you were ideally looking for this year's Olympia, but listen, there's bigger and better things in store for you. Just stay strong, focus on family, focus on, you know, what's more important and, you know, just keep, striving forward for better things in 2019 and that was that was it and then did he maybe, neil did he let me stop you for a second did he actually call you on the phone or was this done during via text messaging and stuff like no that? he just sent me a, a, a whatsapp message yeah. okay and um and rami and myself don't have each other's numbers so he must have got my number off somebody right and uh you know it was, it was it was a genuine message as well so i mean it was very genuine from him i could tell by his words and then maybe a week or two went past he touched base with me again and um was I can't remember, but it was maybe something like this, and I need some advice, you know, I'm kind of a little bit lost, et cetera. And I, and I simply said, you have all the muscle that you need to step on stage and be competitive, but it's about refinement, it's about separation, it's sure. about bringing that right. everything to the stage. And it's, you know, the, I don't know anything about Rami's work ethic, so I'm not going to somebody who is going to form opinions. Sure. My point is, is that there are so many great athletes in this industry we see them every year, you know, every week at shows who have all this potential and maybe just haven't mastered their craft as far right. as their condition is concerned. Rami's also had some amazing elite um, coaches behind him o over the years. You know, Chris, mm -hmm. George, um, Dennis, you know, this is just me naming a few. Um, but we're still yet to see the best of Rami. And I think you will probably agree with me when I say this is that we tend to see two different versions of Rami. So I remember the year that Chris Aceto worked with him, and no disrespect in prejudging, he looked terrible. But what yeah. the hell happened between prejudging and finals? Right. You know, that was you know that was you know a very positive change, and that's no disrespect to Chris, and that's no disrespect to Rami, because you know it's like the human body when it comes to manipulating perfection or condition can yeah. be very very difficult. And obviously, I don't think for one minute Rami's physique is going to be easy to work with. No, right. I don't think that for. But but having said that, Neil, I mean, he obviously was in shape that year. And I think that was the one thing yeah. we haven't really seen yet from Rami. We, he might have been flat and not look good at pre but he was in shape. And I think yep. we've never seen that since then, that him being in yep. shape. And I know you and I have discussed this before. Um, at this yep. point, when you know, with Rami kind of texting you, it kind of feels like a guy like you know trying to hit on a girl. Almost. Did you know that he was going to ask you at, that, at some point that he was kind of hedging around, asking you if, he would, if you would work with him? I think I kind of picked up the fact that it was just strange why he reached out to me <laughs> out of the blue and made contact with me. Mm -hmm. And I also spoke to Flex and said, I think that Rami wants to work with me. He said, really? I said, yeah. I said, because he's messaged me. But it wasn't, you know, I didn't take it out of context. So when I say that, you know, he reached out to me and, and messaged me, mm -hmm. I took the messages genuinely. I genuinely believe that he was, you know, saying congratulations to all the guys and maybe trying to form some form of, I don't know, mutual friendship or, right. or, 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 or friendship. But that being said as well, that, you know, I've always had respect, to, you know, of Rami as a, as a person. Sure. And I've also been very vocal with my opinions, but in a positive way that I feel that there's a lot of refinement which is needed on Rami's physique to be a major player at the Olympia. Now, right. 
there's no reason for anybody to take this out of context and certainly Rami. So my point is that sometimes people are offended with people's honest views. But let's be honest as well, Dave. There's a lot of people who talk shit who have no idea what they're seeing in <laughs> front of them, which come up with these opinions and views. You're right. And I listen to it every every week, and I'm thinking, where is this person actually coming up with these opinions <laughs> and views? And also, you know, what credentials do some of these so-called experts have to form these opinions of people that they don't even know, and they're not even saying respectful things? So when I've spoken about Rami's physique in the past and saying that he needs a lot of improvements as far as refinement and improvement, of separation and everything in between, it's it's always been said in a respectful way. It's never been said in a disrespectful mm-hmm. way. And I think that you will agree with me when when I think the majority of the world, you know, believe that if Rami is able to bring that level of conditioning which is needed to mm-hmm. win that Olympia title, sure. he's gonna scare the shit out of a lot of those athletes because he's got that much muscle on his frame. You know, it, it's funny, but a good, analogy would be I think when you first started working with William Bonac he had some of those issues too and you seem to have been able to bring in more detail to his physique I don't know if it was just through stricter dieting or through training or a little of both but we definitely saw a more refined more detailed William Bonac which obviously blasted him up the placing so Rami's yeah. got infinitely more muscle than William Bonac does if I mean if you could do even a fraction of what you did with Bonac with with Rami obviously we're going to see Rami really start to dominate the the pro ranks i would think yeah and you know i also feel you know with william is that there were a lot of things that william was doing with me when we started working together but really when it comes down to general health and and, and that's really really comes down to and um william wasn't somebody who wasn't looking after his internal and external health right but what i'm saying is it's very easy for 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 athletes to be naive enough to realize that there are so many more parts, moving parts of bodybuilding than just training and basically consuming macronutrient values. Mm. You know, the, there's a lot of information which takes place with the bodybuilding lifestyle and diet as it is, and information, sure. one of the biggest causes you could say for water retention and everything in between. Um, but William's work ethic is, you know, he's such a hard working individual. He's very, very disciplined, he's very, very driven. He doesn't need motivating and inspire, inspiration. He's self-contained with that, and his family are a big part of that. His driving forces to try and strive for a better future for himself and his family. So mm. that's you know great. So as much as I feel that William and myself have, have done a you know a pretty great job of bringing something very special to the stage, I'm certainly not going to be taking the credit for that. I definitely think that you know a big part of this. I think that we just work very well as a team, and we've just started Arnold Prep. So we will be doing the Arnold oh, good. in March. Good. Um, Excellent. And good. I know this 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 uh, podcast is, well, this interview is about Rami. Yes. But I was disappointed with um, the look that we brought to the Olympia. Um, I felt that William's body just ran away and ran away and ran away and ran away. And then when it came about a week out from Olympia, his body was tired. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was disappointing because I felt that if there was a really good year that we had a, a, a main challenge at the title, it would have been this sure. year. Sure, especially with you Phil know. losing, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, but does that does that mean that we've gone back on ourselves? No, not at not at all. I think Williams had an amazing year, you know, in mm. 2018, and I see 2019 being a, a very strong hold as far as him as an athlete in multiple different areas of being on stage and off stage. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. No. So when does Rami actually come to you and say? Uh, Neil, I'd like you to work with me. Or would you consider working with me? How did that go, come down? How did that go down? And, and did you accept him right away? Or did you have to think about it? So what happened, I was actually in Jamaica on holiday with my oldest son. And uh, Rami reached out to me and said, hey, it was kind of like, it looks like you and your son are having a great time in you know, Jamaica. And, yeah. you know, it was like, yeah, man, we're having an awesome time. And how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I just, and then he said, listen, I'd like you to take, would you, would you take me on in 2019? Right. And, um, you know, I said, yes, yes. But I also, you know, said, you know, there are a lot of things that I'm expecting from you. And that comes from hard work, discipline, commitment, you know, all the above. I need to speak to Flex. I need to speak to William. I need to speak to my athletes because ultimately all of these athletes are part of the team. And, um, and I need to make sure that everybody is, is happy and, and aligned with one another because, 
you're a prep coach. There are many prep coaches out there. I'm not somebody who's going to put all my time and attention into one athlete. Yes, I have an amazing relationship with Flex. I got a friggin' great relationship with William. Mm. You know, these guys are a big part of me and my life, and I love them to bits. Mm. Um, so at some point, I know that some of my athletes are going to step on stage and compete against each other. And yes, I have emotional attachment some, to some of these more than others. Why? Because I have a longer duration of history and friendship and everything that. Yeah and everything else which is built upon that but when it comes to coaching i'm not somebody who can put all the time and attention into one and neglect you know one of the other sure. athletes it's just it's not me i'm not i'm not that type of in individual so i wanted everybody to be happy and make sure that they're you know they feel good about this because i'm going to prep every one of those to beat each other i'm going to prep every one of those to try <laughs> Neil, and win those major let's titles. face it Neil, let's be honest there's no way Billy, William Bonac is going to be happy that you're working with, uh, uh, or, you know or Flex for that. I and mean, Flex doesn't really care, but there's no way William Bonac is going to be happy that you're working with Big Romney. But he's not going to say anything to you because, look, this is your livelihood. I mean, I, I understand that. But, um, you know, but I understand what you're saying. You, you don't favor any of your athletes, and that's because you're a great coach because you're emotionally invested in every athlete. What do you think has to be done to get Ramy in the best shape of his life? What, what do you think he needs to weigh on stage? And what would you do differently than what's been done in the past, obviously? Well, first of all, William was actually the complete opposite. Where William was very, very opposite in the sense that William was said, listen, coach, this is business. I understand. You know, I don't have an issue. And, and, and Dave, I'm telling you, this is genuine. William is that individual. I remember, you know, when we competed at Australia this year, and William came second. Me personally, I felt that William won that Australian yeah. show. Were we disappointed? Yeah, we were disappointed, but we were okay with the decision. Mm. And I can remember being backstage, going up to William, said, "Hey, man, you know, I'm sorry." He goes, "It's okay, coach." He said, "Listen, I won last, you know, two weeks ago. Yeah. Rody's won this year. He said this year. He said everyone's happy, everyone's winning money, and that's that is genuine. He's, you know, he is that type of person. Yeah. So." I also know and believe that William's got his own belief in his physique. He knows that if he brings his best to the stage, it doesn't make any difference if Rami is in shape. He's going to create problems for Rami. And if Rami's in shape, he's going to create problems for William. So, yes, we could look at bodybuilding and say that, you know, muscle overpowers other areas of bodybuilding. Yeah, but that physique's got to be in shape and you can't just reward athletes just because of sheer mass because that's not bodybuilding. There's more which is involved with that. What is it gonna take? I need some time with him. You know, I need some personal time with him to get to know him as a person. I need to get in the gym and spend time with him, training with him, mm -hmm. um, break down his body into muscle groups, see how disciplined and how hungry he is, you know, for this type of hard work, which is gonna be in front of him. Um, I am going to go over to Dubai and spend some time training with him. He's going to have to come over to the UK and train with. He's going to have to come over to, you know, Florida and train right. with me when I'm in Florida. So it's going to be personal time. But also, Dave, think about it. William lives in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, even when I'm in the UK and I spend a lot of time in the UK, right. me and William don't see each other very often in the year. Sure. My point is, is that as long as the guys follow the plan and they're relentless in what they're doing and we com we communicate, you know, when we need to, which to me is mostly every day. Yeah. There is no reason for for any of these athletes not to bring something special. So right. I need some personal time around me. Where do you think that he needs to be in terms of weight? And we, we heard numbers over 300 pounds at this past Olympia. Obviously, he was not in the best shape of his life. Do you see him being around that 280, 285 mark? Is that something that you think is reasonable for Rami? Or do you think he can be a legitimate 300-pound stage physique? I really don't give a shit about how heavy he is. So mm -hmm. if he was, for argument's sake, he was 300 pounds at this year's Mr. Olympia, mm -hmm. I do think there was a significant difference in his physique between Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, but even that Saturday's performance, let's be honest, you can take another 10 to 15 pounds off that. Right. So does that mean he's potentially going to be 290? Yeah, he potentially could be 290. There may be a lot of things where his body responds better, um, you know, going into 2019 or the opposite way. I think there's a lot of variables and a lot of things that we need to consider. But until I see and feel how his body is reacting and changing to the protocols, you know, from training, nutrition, supplementation, um, I've already written this first phase of this program, and there's a lot of health supplements, health supplements mm. in that program, sure. which, you know, he's very, very unaware of. 
So um, it'll be interesting to see how his body responds from you know the, 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 the first protocol that I put in place for him. Did, did you get into any of the politics of why he left Kuwait, even though, I mean, because he's, he's lived in Kuwait for a very long time, and he's worked with other coaches while in Kuwait. Why did he feel it was necessary to leave Kuwait and go to Dubai? Do you know, I really don't know. It's not my place to form opinions. I think sometimes in life, we need to make a fresh start. If we're looking to make a, a, a physical or emotional change, sometimes it's best for us to step away from the environments that we're in. Not necessarily because they're bad for us, but just because it's about a fresh, a new start, a fresh start, a different environment, new challenges, new goals. Like that's life in general. So I don't really, I don't know what happened in, you know, in oxygen. I don't know what happened in uh, Kuwait. I really have no interest. Um, I generally mean that. It's not my place to to even be interested in. And um, I think you know there are more important things which need to be addressed, and and the more important things which we need to get some clarity on. on and Ultimately, that is to me is trying to learn Rami's body and mm -hmm. find out exactly, you know, how how essential all the the important things are with what's needed to bring Bandy, Rami on stage. And of course, we have to qualify, so we're going to have to qualify for the 2019 Mr. Olympia. That was so my that next question. That be interesting, and that's going to be exciting in itself. What what show are you guys thinking about? Uh, haven't spoken about a show yet, so I know that Rami would do the Arnold this year if, uh, or next year if uh, if I felt he was ready. I don't think it's it's the right show because I I I feel I need some personal time with him mm -hmm. before we were to you know step into that environment. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think he could do well in the Arnold, but I'm saying why pro why rush the process? when there are bigger things at stake here. Yes, the Arnold would be an amazing title to win. And yes, on paper, Rami would be one of the main contenders going into that show. I don't know who's competing next year, but, you know, William, he's the current, you know, Arnold Classic champion, Roly, if Roly does it. You know, Rami is going to be one of those athletes that everybody's speak, speaking about. But for me, I'm not, it's not the right thing to do. It's, uh, I think we need to look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is, is I need some time to, to learn his body. Then we will decide on a show. Possibly the New York Pro would be a really good fit for Rami, I think. Yeah. Or it could be a show which is a little closer to the Olympia. And it's just a matter of competing close to Olympia and then basically maintaining and manipulating and potentially improving from that. So um, I think there are more things, bigger things important than thinking stepping on stage in March. The bigger, the bigger picture is that we need to bring something special come September. Now that Sean Roden is Mr. Olympia, uh, Neil, with the amazing aesthetics, the small waistline, obviously, the classic lines, the great conditioning you brought last year, what would it take someone like Rami, what do you think Rami needs to do to beat a guy like Sean Roden now that he's the reigning Mr. Olympia? Well, I think this year's decision on the choice of Mr. Olympia was a, was a, a very fulfilling um, new athlete, which has taken, you know, the, 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 the limelight as that open class Mr. Olympia. Sean has that classic shape and structure, very much like a flex wheeler type of physique. I don't think that Sean's got the upper body fullness around us in any of those muscle groups that um, flex, you know, had. But he has lines and he has structure which Rami doesn't have and nor will he ever have so you know but it's about playing to your strengths so mm. you know where do we go from here there is only one direction as far as Rami and that is to try and streamline his work where we can and that's going to be a little difficult but more importantly bring that crisp clean muscle and separation through all those muscle groups so uh, he has the mass and, you know, there are areas, small areas that, you know, he could improve on. So back, lower back, etc. Do I think that Rami is going to lose shows in a rear double bicep pose if he's in shape? No, because he has that mass on his frame. Sure. So um, um, I personally feel that there will be other bigger challenges for Rami on stage if he comes in shape. And I'm not going back to this because William's one of my athletes, but when you look at William pound for pound, top to bottom, side to side, that guy has no missing muscle groups. He's got detail on top of detail. So yeah. he has all that thickness around us. Okay, what advantage does Rami have? Sheer mass and height. But they're two 
polar opposites. Then you've got obviously, you know, the symmetry, the shape and the, the crazy lines of uh, Sean Roden this year. And you've also got the mass of somebody like a Rowley. Um, I still feel that Rowley's got a lot of refinement which is needed, but I say that in a very positive way. He's brought a really great package to the shows this year, so yeah. ma massive respect to him, and, and I'm really happy he's had a great successful 2018, and obviously he's just run the Prague Pro Show after only coming third as well, obviously in the, Arm, uh, in the Olympia, so that's a great result from him. But um, it's refinement, separation and refinement, and that's what it really comes down to. Mm. And I'm interested to find out Rami's work ethic and how hungry he is for success on that stage. And that's going to be a big part of how hard he's willing to push in the gym. Mm. And I haven't seen that with my own eyes and I haven't been in the gym. So I'm looking forward to training him. I won't be training him. I'll be training with him. So I'll set the pace and let's see what happens. Oh, good. Let me ask you a question now. Neil, now that uh, Phil Heath has lost the Olympia, we have a new Mr. Olympia in there. It's changing the guard. Um, it's going to be his first year defending that title, obviously, come 2019, which we know is always a very precarious year for the, for the reigning Mr. Olympia. Um, would Flex Lewis have any uh, interest, do you think, in, in jumping into 2019's Olympia? I know he had, you had discussed that maybe he'd be waiting for 2020. Um, is this something that, that Flex might reconsider now that there's kind of like a changing of the guard? No. No, that's, that's not going to happen. The, um, I know that yourself has obviously... We've spoken briefly in the past and he felt that, you know, Flex taking two years off, build a momentum, might not necessarily be a, uh, a positive thing. But if you really want to make solid improvements to a bodybuilder's physique, and when I say bodybuilder, I'm talking about muscle here, it, you can't force the process because if you're forcing the process, you're going to be penalized with what you bring to the stage because... Anybody could step onto that stage 15, 20 pound heavier, 10 pound heavier, and you might think it's, 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 it's real muscle. No, it, it's not as simple as that. We're not going to be able to carry the refinement and the detail that's needed. Yes, you could arguably say that Flex would have been about 216, 218 on stage if we didn't have to make the weight. Right. He was, you know, we weighed in probably 400 grams, like he was probably like 211.6 maybe at weigh-ins, and we stepped on stage at about 212. Mm -hmm. He was too, pretty much 212. He wasn't 213, 15, 18, no, no. He was roughly about 212, and I feel that this year's package was a very dominating display of everything what bodybuilding is supposed to be about. But... Flex needs that time to grow into his body. I feel that his body's been dragged down too, you know, too many years to fit into that class. And we need to make sure that the improvements and the ma extra mass and the, and the refinement, which is needs to stay there, is not rushed. In the same way, I'm saying, you know, I'm not willing to rush the process of Rami jumping on stage in the Arnolds because there are bigger things here. So I know that Flex will be biting on the chomp, you know, mm -hmm. you know, like chomping his bit and wanting to get on that stage when he's right. there in the audience. And this will be the first time he hasn't stepped on stage in the Mr. Olympia probably for about nine years. Yeah. So he's been, you know, competing constantly on that stage in some capacity for the last nine years and actually been on that Mr. Olympia stage probably for the last 12 years. But, um, yeah, there are, there are more important things at stake here. And I feel that um, when... When Flex steps on stage and 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 shows and displays himself as 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 a a true open class bodybuilder, we need to make sure that it's a positive impact, and that is that is not going to be jeopardized in 2019. I know that everybody probably wants to see him on that stage, but I think there's going to be enough excitement taking place now in 2019 yeah. without you know Flex being on there. I think that. Uh, uh, 2020 is going to be an extremely, extremely interesting year for Flex Lewis and all the team in Y3T. Would Flex would Flex do the Arnold Classic maybe first, or would he wait till the Olympia in, in 20? We, we, we briefly spoke about that as well, Dave, but I think because it's too far away and there's too many variables, like we, we've literally just started off-season. Right. We, he hasn't trained since the Olympia. And when I say he hasn't trained, he's probably been to the gym like four times, you know, threw a little bit of weight around. Mm -hmm. Um, really, he's super, super, super healthy. Um, he looks very impressive, actually. The other yeah. day when he was in the gym and I looked at him and he stripped off and I was like, 
how the hell can you look like that still after <laughs> not training for eight weeks and not eating? Like, it's not possible. I mean, like you, because most people, even if they're genetically gifted, they have to train to create sure. some form of stimulus to keep that muscle. Yeah. He looked incredible. Like, he looks absolutely incredible. But he's been eating super healthy. Yeah, he's mm. eating a little bit of bad calories, but minuscule in, in comparison yeah. to 99% of other people. Well, Neil, it sounds like you got a busy schedule for the next uh, 12 months or so. And uh, congratulations on uh, hooking up with Rami. And uh, I know you'll be keeping us updated on to what's going on. And uh, the best of luck with him. I think he's in good hands. And I think we will see a great Rami in 2019. Yeah, I appreciate it. Dave, listen, I want to give a massive shout out to you as well for everything that you do in the industry. Thank you. You've know, been in the industry for a long, long time. And I know that this year... Uh, before the Olympia was my first uh, chance that I was able to jump on here with, with you and obviously talk, et cetera, and that was a big thing for me, and I, I appreciate it, and I appreciate everything that you do Thank in the industry, and uh, much respect with everything you do from now and the future, mate. Thank you so much, Neil. It's a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, we'll be talking to you, obviously, a lot more in the future. Best of luck in uh, William Bonax prep, of course, for the Arnold Classic. And that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time. Cool, guys.